Okay, we're just going to have a look at forces and stresses as part of the DT GCSE um, theory course. Uh, five forces you need to know. The first one is compressive strength. Now, compression is just the squashing or pushing forces acting on an object. In this case, there's a spring. Other good examples would be concrete columns, chair legs, leg bones, things that have forces that push them together. The opposite of compressive strength is tensile strength. So tension is the pulling forces that act on an object. In this case, uh, the steel cables on a suspension bridge are forever under tension as the deck and the load from the cars are trying to pull them downwards. If those cables had poor tensile strength, they would stretch and the bridge would collapse. So tension is pulling forces and compression pushing forces. This little diagram just explains how uh, tension and compression often act together. So in a, um, in, in a bridge like this, the steel cables are under tension, holding the deck up that is under compression as it's been pushed downwards. The third force that is interesting to look at is bending. Now, bending actually is a combination of both compression and tension, but bending is the force that causes a flat, rigid beam to be shaped into a curved angle. Bending causes the inside of the curve, in this case the top face, uh, to be placed under compression as it is pushed inwards uh, and it causes the outside of this beam or the outside of the curve to place under tension as that face gets pulled apart gets longer where a material is poor under this bending stress cracks will appear so you can see here stress cracks here where the where the material is poor under bending and it's been pulled apart causing cracks or this concertina effect on the top where it's pouring the bending and it's getting pushed together. Torsional force is just the force that acts in a rotational or twisting motion around a longitudinal axis. Materials that can twist without breaking have that high degree of torsional strength. This is what happens all the time in your spine when you twist your body from side to side or when you bend to pick an object up in one hand, or you carry something heavy in one hand and nothing on the other side. It's a really, really good example here is a, a golf swing. So you can see Tiger Woods there undergoing his, his tee shot, his golf swing. His spine there goes through a whole range of motion, a huge torsional rotation. If his spine was poor in torsion or has a poor torsional strength, then he will break his spine. The last force is shear force, maybe the most difficult conceptually to understand, but shear force is when two forces are acting in parallel to each other, but in opposite directions. The best way to think about it is a pair of scissors. The top blade of the scissors acts down and the bottom blade acts up. So they each have the same amount of force applied by the hands, but they act in opposite directions. This causes friction, and that friction cuts or shears a material in two, hence why you know, we call shears shears, where you shear sheep, etc. You undergo shear stress every time you walk. So every time you take that step and one leg leaves the ground, the other leg takes all your weight and creates shear stress on the pelvis. Um, you also see, see shear stress when icebergs or glaciers um, fall into the ocean. Eventually, the weight of the ice gets too big and it pulls away. Gravity causes it to pull away from the glacier into the ocean. That is shear stress. So that's your five different types of force. We have shear, which is motion acting parallel to each other, opposite. Torsional is rotational. Bending is the addition of compression and tension causing a flat plane to turn to a curved angle. We have tension, which is the pulling stress and compression.